Howdy, hey everybody, it's me, again. <laughs> Who else were you expecting? Anyway, I just came home from a job interview. Hopefully that went well. The super rune seems to be working in my favor. Also, very important that you see this. This is one of my favorite outfits to wear to an interview. It is an absolute banger. absolute banger of an interview outfit. It's a skirt. It is one of my absolute favorite interview outfits, like I said. Um, so hopefully, hopefully we hear good news from them soon. Uh, in the meantime, I do have a job and that's about all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> Obviously it's you know, I, I'm still looking <laughs> in the meantime. Uh, it's a little hot for the blazer right now. Love the blazer, but it's a little hot. Um, it's actually really nice out right now. It's kind of pretty cool because it's been so breezy, but the breeze, um, actually it's been pretty much windy, like straight up windy. Um, it's dying off to more breezy now. <clears throat> Oh, uh, are you sniffing my shoes? That's a good boy. You sniffed your shoes. I have to get my laundry then. Um, but yeah, Monday and Tuesday, I worked at my job, my new job. And I had yesterday and today off. And yesterday I, I was just kind of hippy dee being around. Uh, I helped mom with some chores because, you know, she's not feeling up to it yet. Well, she was kind of feverish. I don't know. She's, thankfully, she's going to the doctor on September 7th, so we can finally see if and or what the matter is and what we can do about it. Um, Freeing my hands. I, I love my rings and bracelets. They're, I, I kind of envision them like armor in a way, so I don't usually wear them when I'm at home. Um, same with earrings and necklaces. So pardon the immediate stripping. It's just, it's a little, um, because I just came home and came up the stairs and everything, it's a little, I'm a little warm for my taste, so I'm waiting to cool back down. But then I'll probably just wrap myself in a blanket or go get a hoodie because they are wonderful, wonderful objects that someone invented. Oh. Yeah, that was a big gust of wind. You probably, um, you probably heard that actually. I, I remember, um, I believe it was Deb saying before that I got drowned out by the windows once. So hopefully that doesn't happen again right now because my, uh, um, yeah, my earbuds are, yeah, they're over there. So, and I already stood up once for this video. I'm not sure I should do so again. <laughs> not that I think I'm particularly terrible to look at, but I would like to relax a little, but I acknowledge I've been off schedule, um, primarily because, well, two weeks before I got hired, I was just kind of stressy depressy, as one of my sisters likes to put it, you know, stressed out, depressed, anxious, crabby, menstruating, let's be real. And now I'm free and we're all feeling better because I got a job. Um, hopefully I'll get a nicer job and we'll all feel even better. But um, it is what it is in the meantime. I'm also, I've been really feeling good the past yesterday and today. And I think a lot of it has to do with the, the moon. Like if you believe in such things, then you know what I'm talking about? Um, cause it's 
not just a blue moon, but it's a super moon, um, full moon, I mean, which blue moon meaning is the second full moon in one month. And I, I'm not entirely sure what super moon means. That's more something that my um, mother would be aware of. I, I don't really do the sciencey part of astrology and religion or religion. Yeah, it is technically a religion. I don't really do the, the astrology and mathematical science part of this spirituality. I, I more follow it spiritually and um, that kind of thing. Anyway, new angle because I feel like sitting back rather than hurting my back sitting up. <coughs> Excuse me. Anyway, um, yeah, I figured I'd check in with y'all. Uh, I think I, I had planned to do a vlog yesterday, but I just didn't, it just didn't come, uh, bit. yes. Uh, I just, somewhere between I didn't have the time or the motivation, like, I just didn't have enough of one to tip over into the other. Um, either way. Um, I'm here now. Um, like I said, I'm straight up feeling pretty vibey. It's, it's like, I'm both confident and afraid that I won't get this job that I really want. It's like, on one hand, I feel like I could do anything right now. But on the other hand, I'm like, my fate is still in someone else's hands. And that always, you know, creates some anxiety. So time will tell. Uh, in the meantime, I get to work all weekend. Yay. But, you know, it is what it is. It's, and I'll do what I have to do. That is the millennial way. <laughs> Either way. Um, not sure I have much else to say right now. Um, I do want to do a kind of in-depth review video soon because there is a specific piece of media that I have a lot to say about. And I think that's going to make a lot more interesting of a video than a kind of half prepared lukewarm oh here's something i read recently and what i thought of it um although those are they're pretty fun to do but um this is one that i've had thoughts about for years kind of like pitch perfect only i want to have a i want to be more prepared to talk about it because i just feel more strongly about it than I did for Pitch Perfect. It's, 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 you know how everybody has that one movie or book or series or whatever, where they're like, if one thing was different or, and, or I could fix it, or it's just, you keep watching it or reading it or just engaging with it in some way and going, why am I doing this to myself? Do I like this? Or is it just infecting my life and I can't get away from it? Yeah, that, that's what I want to review next. It's my, my, my one of that. <laughs> um, specifically, it's a movie. Um, I will leave you to guess what that is. Um, which movie it is. Um, the only thing I will say is it's not Harry Potter. In fact, I'm just going to clarify, there we go, that's, that'll be my, my, I guess my main bulk of this vlog is, in a way, the Harry Potter talk. You know, everybody's got a thought, a feeling, a opinion, a relationship with the notorious Harry Potter series. I guess I shouldn't say everybody, um, I'll say many, many people. I specifically was a big Potterhead. 
especially in high school, because it was coming out while I was around that age. Um, so it was like a perfect media to grow up with at that time. I was one of those people who got to experience that. And that was a very unique and interesting experience. I will not deny that. Obviously, it was a big part of my personality when I was in high school. It's one of the things I was known for. It was Emma likes cats and Harry Potter. And she can quote things. But, you know, like, I even, I read the books every summer. Like, the ones that were out. Um, until The Deathly Hallows came out. And I, I read that every summer. And then, uh... I moved out from my mom's and I didn't have access to the books anymore and I just kind of stopped reading them. And I was just kind of like, oh yeah, Harry Potter was fun and, you know, I started having, a part of me wanted to say normal emotions about it. Um, it was more just, you know, like, it just became part of my past instead of like, it was, it was still a part of my life, but it wasn't, wasn't an active part like it used to be you know like um somebody you met on a trip that you really connected with and you became facebook friends and then you stopped talking once you graduated high school or whatever yeah no actually that's a better analogy it was a high school friend I, like i was still friends with them on facebook but we didn't really talk that that was me and harry potter you know, yeah, I still like them, but just didn't talk. But, um, then, you know, JK Rowling started showing what kind of person she really is. And, you know, I moved back in with my mom, who's still very into Harry Potter. And it started becoming a very weird, conflicting experience because it's like, no, J.K. Rowling is kind of a horrible person. I, from what I've heard and what I've read, I don't know her personally. I don't know what changed or how or, you know, I don't know what's going on with her. I don't know what kind of person she she is or versus was versus became to be. I don't know if she changed or if she just stopped hiding. I'm not going to pretend to know. Um, all I know is that, or not all I know, but what I do know is that her, the things she started saying and implying and doing have just been so bad that I did give up on the series. I, I stopped reading it because I, I gave it one last hurrah where I reread the thing one last time just to see if I still could in a way. I did finish it, but I just, I did not enjoy it the way I used to because the entire time I, I'm trying to read it, I'm thinking about the author instead of the book and not only that but i was also because i'm personally mad at jk rowling and the things she's said done implied just her views and everything i don't agree with and i just really don't like so of course i'm like nitpicking her writing as i'm going along and uh just a, a lot of the things in the universe and very <sighs> so this is half born out of me the kind of person i am and half because i don't like her therefore i'm going to nitpick her but some of the, I, I enjoy a lot of her character interactions like that it's pretty good dialogue pretty natural dialogue um and pretty good humor. Like, I thought that was interesting. However, <sighs> her world building frustrates me. And the logic of her world building 
annoys me. It beyond frustrates me. It annoys me. It's just, you can tell, like, some things she foreshadowed well. For example, the locket in um, Grimwald Place that they came back to later. However, there's so many things that she introduced and never really talked about again. For example, the truth potion that no one can pronounce. Um, like, why wasn't that being used during trials? Or any kind of justice arrests maneuver? I'm sorry, but if there is a way to 100% make sure someone's telling the truth and or you can check their memories and just all sorts of stuff like that, there is no reasonable way to have the guilt, you know, guilty people free and innocent people jailed. I, I just, and it's the kind of thing where it's like, why aren't they being more thorough with the people they had arrest? Like that, you know, you know, you know, it, it just, it doesn't seem logical to me. Like, I'm sorry, you have these magical solutions at your hands, and it doesn't matter whether or not it's something, like, yes, it could be inconvenient to make or acquire or do, but you're always going to have specialists, you know, people who specialize and want to do that sort of thing, or are very good at it. For example, Snape very good at the whole diving into people's brains or blocking people out and cons and as well potion brewing like also just don't get me started on Snape I fucking hate that guy uh, you just you use children for thir you know at least 10 years and it's like oh no he's he's wonderful he's so brave he was being a spy, all for the wrong reasons. For the wrong reasons, and he switched too late. Um, like, I understand switching at... Okay, here's a good example. So, my favorite Disney movie is The Hunchback of Notre Dame, or Notre Dame. And I love Quasimodo, I adore Esmeralda, but I also love Phoebus. I think he is a fabulous character. And if you're familiar with the movie, um, you'll know what I'm talking about. But if you're not, um, Phoebus starts out basically as a police officer. Um, the medieval equivalent of a police officer. He's captain of the guard. And, you know, he's working for the bad guy who is, oh, what, what is Frollo? I forget what he was called. Um, judge. He was, he's the judge. He's judge Claude Frodo. Frollo. Not Frodo. Frodo is a wonderful boy. Anyway, Frollo is the main villain and Phoebus was working for him as the captain of the guard. But even though he was working for Frollo and obeying his orders, you could see that Phoebus disagreed with Frollo and had different views that he wanted to uphold. For example, when Quasimodo was being harassed at the Feast of Fools and arguably tortured, publicly humiliated, Phoebus straight up went to Frollo and said, request, you know, requesting permission to st stop this. And you know, Frollo denied him. Luckily, they were interrupted by Esmeralda, because I wonder what Phoebus would have said next, because he is a little hot-headed. And so, it's... And yes, he doesn't defect from Frollo until, one may argue, it was too late. You know, like, people were hurt, pre presumably killed off-screen. And, you know, the the... the mill yeah the mill was set on fire that's when Phoebus chose to defect one could argue that he could have saved a lot of damage by defecting sooner but he might have been hoping to 
make changes from the inside. And when he saw that he couldn't, he stepped out. Of course, there is also the comfort that comes from a place of power, especially for a white guy who is presumed in his 30s, if not a little older. It's uncertain how old Phoebus is. I, I want to guess in his 30s because um, he was fighting in the Crusades for, he, as he says, a couple of decades. I'm going to take that literally to mean 20 years, and he went as a teenager, presumably as a page or a uh, squire kind of thing, and then worked his way up the ranks, because he was also called a war hero, and then sent home in his 30s. I like to think Esmeralda is in her mid-late 20s. She looks like she is. She sounds like she is. And then Quasimodo's just 20. He, I, I always imagined Esmeralda was his senior. Um, that's not the point. Anyway, so Phoebus turns over a leaf and does way more good than he did as a medieval police officer. But, um, and he, and he does it, he puts, he puts his whole pussy into it. You could, like, like I said, you could definitely argue that he should have switched earlier as, you know, as soon as his conscience started telling him, hey, this isn't great. And, or he should have just pushed Frollo off the goddamn justice building. But then we wouldn't have had a movie. Um, as for Snape. When I talk about him switching too late, I mean mentally, I think. Because um, it's not just that he... I guess the main difference I want to make between him and Phoebus is that Phoebus didn't actively cause harm. If anything, he tried to you know, make things as harmless as possible within reason, of course, you know, whatever Phoebus's specific reasons were. Again, like I said, this is a adult white man in medieval France that, you know, their, their goals are only so great. But Snape went ahead and leaked that vital information to Voldemort, which Voldemort ended up targeting towards his, you know, big teen crush love, um, you know, the love of his life, which I will give him that because I did see a good argument that Lily was probably the only person that showed Severus, um, genuine kindness. I will give Snape that. However, Snape did not show anyone else genuine kindness in return. He knew what it was. He knew how to do it. He just never did. And he only switched over to the good side because Lily was impacted by his actions, which he should have known was going to happen. I'm sorry, but when you're on the opposite sides of a war of someone, you have to understand that they will be hurt. And he knew Lily as a person would not have stayed out of things. She would have jumped in. So that's his own dumbass fault. And he he can't go around going, I didn't think Voldemort would pick Harry. Doesn't matter. You gave him the information, you dumb twat. I'm sorry, I'm swearing a lot, but like, Jesus, I hate Snape. Anyway, so then he goes and he bullies children for 10 years, which I don't know why the fuck Dumbledore would let him do that. Well, Nobody knows why Dumbledore did half the shit he did. He's... <sighs> anyway. But, yeah, then 
then, you know, we find out at the end, you know, oh, he was always working to protect Harry because of Lily. But it's like, how much protecting was he really doing? Really? When you're just emotionally abusing the child for seven years of his goddamn life. How? And it's like, yes, he looks like his father, but he's also his mother's son. And also, he's already from an abusive home. And also, why are you taking it out on the other kids? What did they do? Like, what did Neville do besides be incompetent? Because he's 11. And he's never brewed a potion before. Get off your fucking head. Who let this man teach? I'm sorry. There's so many things Dumbledore could have had him do besides teach. And it's just... It just, uh, I don't know. It's a lot of the things J.K. Rowling writes. It's like, you want us to believe Dumbledore is this wise, compassionate person, but then he does dumbass shit like that. And, and I just, like I said, with a lot of plot devices and um, magic methods and spells and things that are introduced in the beginning of one book to become obviously relevant later in the book, but never come back up in the series. Um, obviously everybody likes to point out time turners, which I'm sorry, never introduced time travel into a series unless the series is about time travel, like Doctor Who. And even then, you're gonna get consistencies and paradoxes and crap. So you just have to accept that time travel is gonna get funky. But like I said, just, just don't put time travel in your series unless you're willing to devote more attention to it. Not just some casual, oh, she did it to study and it'll miraculously get us out of our situation later in the book. Yay. That's just, mm, I do not like that. I do not think that's good writing. As, and then like, Oh no, it didn't come up later because they smashed the time turner supply. Well, that's fucking convenient. I, mm, there's just, like I said, I could sit here and nitpick the whole Harry Potter series for another three hours, probably. I have a lot of opinions. And obviously I have several years of experience and, um, familiarity with the series but i don't really talk about it anymore because like i said any time that i think or talk about it nowadays it's accompanied with immediate thought but jk rowling's just a piece of shit and it's just it ruined the entire series like it it, it feels a bit like a betrayal admittedly it um, and then of course there's part of me that's just like oh wow i should have seen this coming or i should have known she was you know anti-semitic and i should have seen this and it's like why you don't know the person and honestly when i was in you know when i was first starting the series i didn't even know what anti-semitism is was i know now but I, I didn't know i was a child the fuck did i know not much. I was a dumbass. Um, a gifted kid, but I was a dumbass. Anyway, uh, <laughs> most children are. Um, but yeah, no, I, that's not the kind of thing. I, I wouldn't have known transphobia either. Like, I, I wouldn't have understood those concepts. But it's just, you know, <sighs> so, I cannot support Harry Potter anymore. Like I used to have, um, you know, decorations, clothes, um, you know, various Harry Potter trinkets and whatnots around my room and in my closet. I ended up just boxing them all up because, and I'm giving them away because I don't want to see them anymore. I don't want to think about it anymore. I don't want to hear anything to do with JK Rowling. And obviously I did very much enjoy Harry Potter at one point in my life, 
but I've moved on. There's plenty of other things to watch and read and enjoy and move on from as well, actually. Um, cause you know, no author is perfect. For example, you know, Lord of the Rings, J, um, Tolkien, I presume he was mentally a product of his time. You know, middle, uh, well, well off white guy. He had servants and shit. He was probably sexist, probably racist too. But the reason why I'm more willing to talk about Lord of the Rings as opposed to Harry Potter is because Tolkien's dead. He cannot actively harm anyone anymore. If I sunk money into something with the Lord of the Rings, he has no say in where it goes now because he is deceased. Whereas if I paid money to go to Harry Potter world or whatever, JK Rowling gets some of that and she can put that into whatever crosses her skeevy little mind. And that's why there's such a stink about JK Rowling as far as problematic authors go. And yeah, no, I have not sunk any money into Harry Potter shit in years. So, like I said, it's just going to go straight into a transphobe's pocket and then she's going to do some dumbass harmful shit with it. And I don't want to be a party to that. I mean, I, I can't afford to actively support trans people. Unfortunately, I can't even really afford to support myself right now, but I can avoid giving money to JK Rowling at least. Um, of course, with that said, I don't necessarily extensively research every author that I read. That seems weird to me to do, but I also haven't bought any books in a while. I, I usually borrow from the library and then if I like it, I'll try to go out and buy it if I can afford to, because I, I don't really have money right now. Uh, I think the last book I actually bought was uh, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, which is the Hunger Games prequel, um, which I really enjoyed. I, I actually really liked it. I, I like reading uh, <laughs> villain psychology, um, but I, I don't think Stephanie Meyer is a issue. I could be wrong. I could absolutely be wrong. I've been wrong about many things and I will continue being wrong about many things, but I, I didn't research that. I just bought the book because so I was just like, holy shit, there's another one. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's going forward. That is kind of my history with my personal history with Harry Potter and why I'm not going to want to talk about it really at all. Like it was fun at the time, but I, I can move on now. Um, I think I'm also going to add that there is no truly pure media and it's always worth, this is going to sound obvious, but reading with your brain, you know, watching movies with your brain, it's, you, you have to indulge in your own critical thinking and what feels right or wrong to you. And there's no way to have a purely like a pure piece of media. I don't think that's possible, especially because a lot of conflict stems from what is viewed as problematic. I'm sure. Um, I think you probably could try to come up with a 
pure thing, but I, I'm not so sure it's going to be as interesting as you'd like to believe. I don't know. Um, for me, that's part of fantasy is part of fantasy is reading about things that are viewed as problematic and being able to walk away from it because it is contained in a fictional universe, arguably where it belongs. As for supporting corrupt people, that is unfortunately inve inevitable in this current iteration of society, which <laughs> sounds very Joker of me, doesn't it? Anyway, um, I, I, I guess I'm having trouble articulating my point. I'm not entirely sure how how to say what I mean because it, it I, I sound like I'm at conflicts where I'm like don't support JK Rowling but you know go buy shit it, I don't know it's just like it's easy to not support JK Rowling I mean full stop honestly <laughs> but um she is specifically easy to target because her case is so famous. You know, everybody's talking about it. Whereas um, smaller authors or creators you might not know about or hear about, especially if you're someone like me who doesn't really indulge in celebrity gossip or trivia. You know, obviously I kept an ear out for J.K. Rowling because I was just because I loved Harry Potter so much. And that's why the everything that happened with Harry Potter actually impacted me um, personally. Unfortunately, I can say that, you know, I have not cared as much about things that did not impact me personally. You know, I'm a human being. That's what part of part of what we do is we ignore things that don't impact us personally. And it's Part of why some of us are very discompassionate. Discompassionate? Dispassionate? I don't know. Why some of us are kind of dicks. <laughs> um, there's also, for me personally, if I try to care about everything all the time, it just exhausts me completely. So... Well, right now I'm just reading what I have and enjoying it. Um, my sister has me reading a new series, which is okay. <laughs> it's more interesting than another series she tried to get me into. But yeah, uh, I'm not here to stand on a soapbox and say, you know, I'm brilliant and my opinions are right. I, I'm just another person with another opinion. Um, I, I hope I articulated my point. I'm not sure exactly if I managed it. Obviously, I didn't really have a plan. I just kind of went to a job interview, came back, and was just like, ooh, I think I'll vlog. And then suddenly Harry Potter happened. I don't know. Uh, ooh, excuse me. My, uh, yeah, anyway. I hope that was at least entertaining for you to experience whether or not you agree with me. I don't particularly care, um, probably because I probably won't talk to most of you. Um, I will say I, I care if Infinite Fruit agrees with me because we're mutuals on Tumblr and that's important. <laughs> I'm sorry, Fruit. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I've embarrassed myself enough for one day. I'll uh, see you guys around. Bye-bye.